once more from the top. Chapter 1, The Hero and the Princess You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. A princess who is also so much more. So hello, Professor Bright here, and welcome back to Slay the Princess, where we have finished our first, uh, arc ending, as it were. The true ending, I assume. I admittedly have not looked up if there are more things like what we went through the past, oh, I want to say six episodes or so. And, uh, I have to say, if that is the true ending, and it felt very much like the true ending, good on you. Like, really, these developers did some great work. I kind of want to check out their other game, but also at the moment, my understanding is it's not finished. And so, here we are, doing another normal run of Slay the Princess, because we never actually did that, did we? I think we immediately went on the Stranger's Path, because I immediately started defying the narrator, and, uh, well, that kind of went well, sort of, after a fashion. It did teach us more about the princess, and I think that ending was actually rather optimistic, cheerful, Happy, good for the universe, various other things. I think it was a positive ending, a true ending. It felt complete, as it were. And so I'm not really expecting the same sense of completion here, but I'm expecting something to happen. Or at least for us to get some idea of what a normal playthrough would look like. You're here to slay her. If you don't... It will be the end of the world. And now the choice is going to be... Which ending do I go for? Or do I go into a new path, knowing that I risk actually accidentally ending back up on that path we sort of started at? Hmm. Also, pardon me, my voice is kind of hoarse today. So, pardon. Uh, let's see here, um, ba 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 Yeah, I've always wanted to offer Monarch. Well, no, I really haven't, but, hmm. Killing a princess seems kind of bad, doesn't it? I don't know. Are you a monarch? Yeah, yeah, shush. He's slain. Shush, narrator. I don't actually know which critical choices lead to different voices appearing. And I probably could have actually gone back to one of my earlier playthroughs to see how we make the decisions and just repeated those decisions, but eh. But yeah. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. Yeah, we're just going to move forward. Actually, you know what? I'm curious. Like, genuinely curious. Take the blade, enter the basement. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. Yeah, I'm just going to continue on the stairs. You're still listening to reason. No, I'm not. Uh, steal your nerves and step forward. I kind of love this, though. Here's the thing. Mm, the temptation. But no. I actually want to see in the quote-unquote good ending with the crayon drawing, I kind of just want to see what that looks like when the stranger doesn't sort of pull us from that possibility. This is a curiosity-satisfying kind of run. Blade tightening as you yep, and kill. You lunge for. Uh... Yeah, no, she's dead. Yes. Totally dead. Bye! Oh, okay. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. Fascinating. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. Our reward, huh? Huh? Is that so? Is that so? Narrator. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, something like that. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Fascinating. And knowing what we know now about the narrator, this all kind of has context of, oh yeah, I just prevented my universe from dying. Forever. Yeah. Doesn't seem like a good ending, though. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're good with this. Are we really happy? Now we're happy. Really? Well, 
If you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time. Yay! Wait, really? And then just goes to credits. Okay, yeah, fair. Oh, there's a little snake and axolotl. I don't remember these. Adorable. Anyway. <laughs> ah, I see. Here's the track order for a special playlist just for you. Hmm, hmm, curious. Okay, so that confirms a suspicion I had that the only difference really was. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't know that. Let's do another new game real quick. I don't actually know. trying to think how to phrase this. Uh, I don't actually know that when the entity, the shifting mound, when it took away the princesses, I don't know that the scene before that was the ending, as it were. Like, that would be the last scene with the princess. I don't really have any sort of insight there. Huh. So, yeah, I got an achievement, but no insight. That's slightly upsetting. But, um, hmm. Maybe I'm okay with the world ending. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. But maybe I'm okay with it. I mean, maybe some people do. Like, nihilists. Or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Notice the concern that he might have accidentally made a nihilist out of the god that he was forming. Hmm, curious. Curious, curious, curious. Alright, um... Hmm... Well, let's just continue to the cabin. There's work to be done, you as it were. Way up the short path to the and cabin. actually, you'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. Oh? She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. It is fascinating to me how all of these things apply to you. Hmm, a little bit of projection there. Fascinating. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. And because this is all more or less a construct of our mind, it's fascinating to me that we ended up as this hero trying to save a princess. The princess being change, being transformation. To quote the game entirely, the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change, transformation. Hmm. This was a fun little storyline, honestly. The, now that I know that, everything else sort of just forms together, as it were. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh... Perhaps not, but... Hmm. Also, the idea of the hero being... The thing that doubts the narrator. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only hmm. furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. Yes. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Well, actually, I don't know that I do. I might, I might not. I don't know. Hmm. Yes. Yes, I do. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Indeed, it would. And I don't quite remember exactly how 
we get to a certain ending that I am hoping for. Curious about, the we shall say. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. But we'll try. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Oh, quite probably, in fact. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool mm. you. It's all part of the manipulation. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. <laughs> oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. <laughs> well, we don't really need the element of surprise, let's be honest. You walk down the stairs. She's chained up. It's fine. Eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. So it is. So it is. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. Hmm. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. I was not. Yeah, it wasn't a joke. Actually, I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. It's true. It's true. I won't drop it, though. I'm going to tighten our grip. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. And notice how she changes to match our perceptions of her. We think she's a threat, and, and so she becomes a threat. Huh. They really did, like, tie this all together at the end. It really laid out everything that happened and sort of explained everything, really. Hmm. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. We would, we would. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Bad it's argument. Hard. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. I'm not dropping the blade. Then I'm not talking to you. Then we're at an impasse. Squint at the princess while holding onto the blade. You stare at the princess, squinting. She squints back. The two of you are gonna do this forever, aren't you? You're goddamn right we are, hero. I love this. <laughs> squint at her even harder. You squint even harder. Yes. So does she. At least nobody's dying right now. You're going to have to make a choice. You can't keep squinting forever. Eventually, someone is going to have to blink. Damn, I was hoping for an option like blow air in her face or something like that. I go, <laughs> But no, no, I think we know the answer. And for the greater good, slay the princess. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. Hell yeah! We love a fighting princess. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurt! Yeah, I bet it did. Though she's unarmed. The shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. And she is as strong as she is because we perceived her as a threat. Initially, we were uncertain and thus 
well, she became significantly stronger. Also, like the definition on her arms. Weird that she hasn't pulled this off yet, but that's neither here nor there. Blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. Also, somewhat sensible heals. We appreciate that. Turn this around. Finish the job. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here either. Excuse me? Pardon? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation. Yeah, that's Honestly, actually interesting. It's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. It is indeed. You made us into gods of a sort. And... Did you set this up so that if either of us died? Well, no, it was just if we died, things reset. Huh. Curious. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess well, I can now. A friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. Shame. The you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. Yeah. The two of you fall to the floor. It was a good fight, though. This was fun. The princess. Yeah, it was. Her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? Oh, I know for a fact that it isn't. And I am counting on that. But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. And by what force are we resurrected? I assume it has to be the princess, the shifting mound, as it were. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. A slightly better princess, in my humble opinion. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Just yours, though. And the start of a new world as well we do forget. Yeah, I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu. A terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. Hmm. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to That's fine. It doesn't matter if he can hear us. The only thing that matters is marching up to that cabin and winning. And the second best voice is here! Look, I really love the contrarian, but yes! Second best voice. That's okay. The spirit. There's no point in squabbling when the real threat is just up that hill. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda giddy about this, because I, I wanted to know how this story was gonna end, and it got interrupted by, well, the consequences of my actions. So, uh, yeah, I'm... This is more than de just deja vu, though. I'm pretty sure this whole thing literally just happened. It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. Like I said, we've just met for the first time, you and I. Uh-huh. Well, I guess we're proceeding to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. Is it that she'll lie, cheat, and do anything to win? She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. You see, I think Don't this sentence word, right here might have been the mistake. Because again... She becomes what we perceive her to be, and why our default perception was a princess, couldn't say, probably has to do with the fact that we want to save her from the initial start of, uh, well, our cognition, as it were. Just as part of our role as the long quiet, we were a part of her, and we perhaps wish to become a part of her again? I don't know. I don't know how we want to parse that, but regardless. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. I mean, you can kind of cheat in a fight, but eh. Are you sure about that? 
Details. The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. Appreciated. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Nah. Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. We really never paid attention to the narrator at all, did we? Huh. <laughs> I mean, we knew he was trapping us here, or was responsible, from the start. The cabin is tighter but, than its exterior eh. would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. Indeed. See? Even the cabin has the right idea. Let's get moving. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hmm. Here, I kind of want to save things. Because I'm curious about a few things. Uh, First of all, approach the mirror. I want to check up something. The next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. Fair. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll... You reach forward, hmm. rub your hand. But there was a mirror a second ago. Fair enough. I kind of want to see in the mirror if we could see the reflection of the narrator before. And I just never noticed it, but... And now it's eh. gone, so all of us can stop arguing about it and get to fighting. Approved. Now, I don't know, do we fight her barehanded or do we take the blade? I don't know. But I'm going to just go with the blade you for take now. take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement. Let's have some fun! The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive, with an almost sulfuric odor to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally. It's been ages since I've had a good fight. I think it's actually been less than five minutes, but hell yeah. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Intimidating. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. Hey, you and me both, man. But yes. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. Hard disagree, narrator. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Why is it always only one shackle, though? Eh. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. I know. It's great. And you brought your little knife, too. Yes. I'm going to have fun breaking you into little pieces. Right back at you. Uh, let's see. So you do remember me. Oh, I remember you all right. Best three minutes of my life. So, why don't we do it again? I mean, we need more experience so we can last longer. See? She wants hey. to fight us again. There's no reason for us to stand around talking. I think we should do a little bit of talking, but you all know. Alright. Fine. I believe you. What? What you said earlier hmm? in the woods, I believe you. You've already met the princess, and the princess has already met you. And it was That's great. all the more reason to take this seriously. You don't know that whatever brought the two of you back to life isn't a fluke. And beyond that, do you know who doesn't remember anything that happened last time? Me. I don't remember. Except, one, that's a lie. But two, you designed this scenario. Sort of. From a... I mean, not the details of it, but, like, you had to know. Uh, are you okay? Clearly not. He's afraid that his universe is going to die. But, 
That's not our problem. Of course I'm not okay. As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. Not all of us have the luxury of jumping over to a parallel universe the second we die. Well, maybe you should have, you know, worked on that instead. I mean... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. Temptation. We're surrendering to this temptation. Just because it bothers you, I'm going to take this even less seriously. You don't know the depths of my apathy. You're joking, right? I'm just going to pretend that you're joking. Hey, you made me. Yeah, you better be joking. We can't win unless you take this seriously. You know, that's a fair point. So yeah, you look different. You look exactly the same. Oh. Shame, but okay. Ah, ba 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 ba. I'm not saying I'm not here to fight, but I think the two of us have a few things to unpack first, like how we're both still alive. Like, don't get me wrong, we're fighting, but yeah, how's this working? What is there to unpack? I was dead and now I'm not and the same goes for you. There. Unpacking done. Glad we had that conversation. Don't you get it? We've been given free reign to wail on each other. Forever. I mean, not necessarily just wail on each other, but sure. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. I get that. But now. Hmm. Alright, let's fight. Let's go! Finally ready to complete your destined task, you launch off the whetstone floor of the basement and catapult yourself headlong towards the princess. I think we can do without the finally there, but sure. Here we go. Let's make this count. Oh, we'll make it count all right. Yeah. Ah. Uh, As you bridge the gap, your blade slashes across the princess's chest, splitting skin and drawing a jagged line of bright red blood. But she's unfazed by your onslaught. Her expression barely changes as her fist collides with your ribs, cracking them like twigs and driving you right back down to the basement floor. You can hear her chains snap as you struggle to recover from the impact. She almost looks disappointed in us. Why is she disappointed in us? Oh, you don't actually get it, do you? Hmm? That knife may be sharp, but you clearly don't want to kill me. It's not fun if you hesitate. It's not fun if you try to trick me and make me bleed out. It's only fun if you go straight for the heart. You need to put everything you have into seeing me dead. Or what's the point? That's right, guys. Commit. So Commitment. Don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Kill me. Commitment is the key to any great relationship. Admittedly, some of this is not applicable to the real world, but, but... Don't let her get in your head. Hey. Reincarnation <laughs> or not, this world needs you to win. She's huge, but that probably means she's slower than us. Take it slow, think it through, and don't panic. Bleeding her out is our best course of action. Don't listen to them, she understands something that they don't. The only way to win, the only way out of this, is through her. Hmm. Go head on. If that's your plan, then that's your plan. You push off the ground, ignoring the pain in your ribs as you charge at the princess once more. You can feel flesh give way before a sudden impact blunts your momentum, your weapon tightly lodged in the bone of her arm. She grins at you from behind her guard. And what a smile. I love it. Pull it out. We'll try a different angle. No, we can do this. Just keep pushing. We're not gonna win if our weapon's stuck in her arm. Then we'll cut it off. The princess's grin widens as the two of you push against each other, her fiery eyes and masochistic glee practically lighting up the dreary cave. See, she's having fun with it. Yes, you finally get it, don't you? Hmm. 
Silently continue pushing? Hmm. I do. Nothing exists outside of us. It's just you and me, dying and coming back, clashing against each other, forever. That's not what's going on. There's an entire world at stake here. Uh, except that's exactly what's going on. You, uh, kind of screwed up when you built this place. Yes, the fate of the world doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is this fight. The only thing that matters is getting stronger. And the only way to get stronger is to win, even if it takes us forever to get there. Your balance is suddenly thrown off as the princess pulls you into her knee. It collides with your ribs, and you feel them splinter, cracking like wet wood from the impact. We're fine, but you barely have enough time to notice before the princess follows up and smashes her forehead against yours. Perfectly fine. Your grip loosens from the impact, the blade still wedged in her arm as you tumble to the cold stone floor. I said we're fine. I didn't say you weren't fine. I was just describing what happened. You might not have said as much, but you certainly implied it. It really doesn't matter. The princess glances down at the blade embedded in her arm, and with near total ignorance to pain, slides it out of its sinewy prison. You forgot this. Oh, damn. She tosses it at your feet. Ah. I mean... This is where the choices get a little bit more difficult, but... Huh. Don't you want to be free, though? Isn't there more to life than waking up chained in the basement and fighting to the death in an endless loop? You're walking a thin line, hero. Hey, 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 narrator. Shut up. You are an idiot who tried to preserve his world for all eternity. I'm just here to have fun. Is there more to life? When you're not here, I feel empty and alone. When we're not fighting, I feel stuck. Like, there's something important I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I'm being shoved into a space where I don't fit. See? This this is all your fault, narrator. But when we fight each other, when we fight each other, it's like this wave of feeling. Like, everything I break in you and everything you break in me is important. Like, we're really, truly communicating. Life is suffering, and we will feel every inch of it. And we will persevere. Can't say I'm a fan of whatever weird bond those two have. Hero, hero, I like you. I like you a lot. But sometimes you need to stop being the third wheel, all right? Nor am I. It's dangerous. But maybe you can use it to your advantage. You can fuck right off. There'll always be another chance for, to for us to kill each other. Huh. Don't care. Fair. Let's go. You and the princess attack each other once again, each of you dealing a single, terrible, lethal blow. Wait, does that mean we're... dead? Or rather, about to be dead? As your blade pierces her sternum, the princess buries her fist into the soft meat of your organs. You feel a few horrifically painful pops, a gush of fluid, and it's over. It's finally over. No, it's not. We're just getting started. I love the way you took control of that moment. It is over. Dead is dead. I know this isn't the happiest ending for you, but you saved the entire world from ruin. There are few better endings than that. Oh, I don't know about that. Well. Are you going to listen to him, or are you going to listen to me? Get up. We're getting Wait, up. No, that can't be right. Ain't your world anymore, narrator. Your eyes bolt open and you push yourself back to your feet. Alive. Alive and well. Ha! I told you. I told you this wasn't over. What about her? The blade went right through her heart. What about her? If we're fine, then she's fine. No, she's 
dead. She has to be. No. Hey. Right. We're all shit out of luck, aren't we? Yeah, just you. I knew it. I told you we should all believe in her. This is perfect. The princess rises from the ground, staggering slightly, one hand wrapped around the hilt of the blade still buried in her heart. We don't even need to start over anymore, do we? Let's go again. Hell yeah. She pulls the weapon from her chest, barely wincing, and hurls it at your feet. You know what to do. Again. But she came back. What's the point of fighting her if she can just do that? Because it's fun, hero. She's having a good time. We're having a good time. This is sort of the date night of our universe. Our pocket universe, as it were. Let's enjoy it. All of you need to settle down. This whole situation is coming dangerously close to untethering. She clearly never actually died. You just missed her heart, that's all. Oh no, that's a lot of blood right there. Oh, we just missed her heart. Oh, of course, that's all. You were the one who said we hit her heart. You were the one who said it was finally over. Well, I guess I had it wrong. You had a lot of things wrong, narrator. I guess you had it wrong. Aren't you supposed to know everything? Uh, hmm. I never said I knew everything. Close to untethering? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It, it means nothing. I shouldn't have said that. But you did say it, so it means something. Oh, stop bickering over nothing. Our destiny is right in front of us. Pick up the blade and go to her. I love that, you know, devoid of the voice acting here, a lot of this has, like, the language of someone who's just like, listen, she's right there, just go talk to her. And by talk to her, I mean stab her with a blade. Ah, uh, I do love this. Okay, fine. That is what I meant by untethering. Do you hear him rambling on about destiny? He's lost the thread, and if you lose the thread, you won't be able to save the world. Keep saying the world instead of my world, but okay. And what is that supposed to mean? I don't have to answer that, and I'm not going to answer that. Oh, but you will. Why the bloody hell not? Because right now, there's still a razor-thin chance that you're able to get your act together. There are patterns of thought out there that beg to be finished, but once you finish them, that's it. They change everything. There's no going back, and if I say anything else, you're going to finish one of those thoughts. This is an interesting hint as to what happens in the stranger ending, quote-unquote. Which I kind of wonder if I'm using the right wording for that, but... There's another discussion to be had. It's the problem when you don't look something up, and well, here we are. What? Hmm. Interesting that you can lie, too. I kind of wonder what some of these other options are, but... I mean... Yeah. It's kind of too late. You mean thoughts like... The princess can't die, don't you? Well, it's too late for that. I think we've all thought that one. Yes. Exactly. Like, the princess can't die. I tried, you know. I tried very hard to make this work. And perhaps if you actually explained what this is, what all of this is, you might have succeeded. But you didn't. So, oh well. I, uh... I don't like that resignation. Are you sure we can't just unthink it? Yeah, sadly you can't unthink thoughts and you can't unsay words, hero. Sorry. Yes, like I said, I'm afraid some thoughts can't be unthought. I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to pour myself a stiff drink. If I'm going to see the end of everything, I'd rather not be sober. A decision I can respect. So I was right. Why are all of you so glum? This is perfect, isn't it? We get to experience greatness and battle and triumph forever. I just love the stubborn. They're, I love that they get what they wanted, and it's just its just such a happy ending for everybody, really. But I think it was the stubborn one who said, your destiny awaits, right? See, the narrator doesn't get what he wants, which is what I want, and the stubborn gets to, you know, fight the adversary quote-unquote, forever. No, 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 no. No, hold on. There has to be another way. 
what if we just leave her down here? What if we run away? What if we convince her not to end the world? I mean, it's a little bit late for that. You can't reason with her. Ending the world is her fundamental nature. It's not a decision she can flip on and off. It is her. Correction, she is transformation, change. Again, the ebb and flow, the shifting mound. And what exactly can't we leave her down here? No, she'll find a way out. Because all it would do is stall the inevitable. And what's wrong with stalling? It's kind of all you're doing, let's be honest. Oh, there's plenty wrong with stalling. The end is still the end and I'd rather face mine head on. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. You decided to create an entire pocket universe, break reality, and split it into two adversarial forms that's not facing your end head on that's trying to prevent it trying very hard to prevent it and trying to prevent the universe from continuing and changing so hey narrator like i get why you did it most people probably would if it was within their power but also you shouldn't shouldn't have done this you screwed up now bad things are happening to your reality Sucks. Oh, you mopey ass. Why did you even ask us to slay her if it was going to end like this? Because it didn't have to, hero. Come on now. Because it didn't have to end like this. Oh, damn, I actually if remember more of this than I thought I did. Everyone's last moments arguing with you. Fair. It's time. Yes, I suppose it is. If, if, if we fight her forever, then maybe she can't end the world. Maybe everything can still work out. I mean, technically, I guess that would kind of prevent her from escaping. I guess we'll just have to see how things play out. Don't you get it? You don't have to shuffle your feet. What comes next is going to last forever. Join your adversary. Obviously. With an unbreakable determination, you snatch the blade from the floor and stumble back to your feet. Both you and the princess quake with adrenaline as your eyes lock across the basement floor and share a knowing look. Ah, so romantic. So beautiful. I love that smile of hers. Free from hesitation, <laughs> you close the distance. Both oh. you and the princess aiming to end each other. Your blade digs into her neck, grinding against her vertebrae as her fist connects with your body. The impact forces the air from your lungs, stars dancing in front of your eyes as you fail to keep your bearing. You both collapse to the ground before either of you has a chance to survey the damage. And then we get up. Yes. 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 And then you get up. That was a good one. More. Say the princess you and again. The princess exchange dozens of devastating blows. Sometimes you manage to strike first, and sometimes she tears through you before you have a chance to act. But more often than not, each of you fells the other in the same moment. Again, their use of greys and red is just kind of, huh, interesting. And then you get up and do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. You know, we never got to see our romantic line. We're all still here. This is all gonna be okay. Damn. Isn't it? Isn't it? But it doesn't answer the voice. He's gone. What are you waiting for? I'm right here. Do you think this is... What is this place? A great question. Did we do this? I mean, yes. Huh. I didn't think we had it in us. But I guess that stuck-up control freak was right. Seems so. It's the end of the world, isn't it? It's the end of everything. Far from it. We're still here. And she's still here too. True. But what now? The princess stumbles and her body slumps. I feel so... tired. Are... Are you okay? We've been fighting for a long time. You should rest, probably. The what? No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. You do not have an opportunity to respond. Something has taken her away and has left something else in her stead. 
She's gone. Where did she go? Wait, what? Should we try and find her? Oh, there's that mirror. Why is it here? Why now? Interesting. So, a question. Because now I need to know. The thing that took her away, obviously it is the stranger, the shifting mound, the entity between things, between spaces, but... Fascinating. Does every ending end that way? I wonder. Huh. I mean, I think I'm supposed to go look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. Screw the mirror. We just need to find the princess. Agreed. Approach I'm the mirror. You don't. Mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Hmm. Gaze into our reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. And I wonder... I can't really see... I just want to see the reflection there. No, it's just us. It's just us. But what now? You're alone in a place that is empty. It's quiet here. Proceed to the cabin. You. Again. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. What do you mean? I'm sorry. There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. Oh. This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. Curious. I promise that it doesn't hurt. Except I know what this is. So, attack the entity while it's still fragile. Your will cuts across the entity in front of you, but nothing happens. My roots burrow in an ocean beyond your sight. We cannot harm each other as we are now. Furious. Huh. So is this just what's going to happen to- Hmm. Let me rephrase this. Is this, by default, what happens at the end of her storyline? Or is this all because of that initial case where we created this entity between spaces, the god, the shifting mound, etc.? Hmm. Nothing as we I have ways to test that. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. Indeed. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I- Hmm. Okay, make me forget. She asks that you won't. Hmm. Bothersome. Okay, I may need to do some changes, some editing of files to essentially unmake the stranger. I'm, huh, I'm gonna have to look things up. But, interesting. Because that's the thing, right? That first ending, it let me get the good ending, quote unquote. The uh, ending where we killed the princess, it got me an achievement for that and all. So I don't know if perhaps that ending just automatically leads to the stranger or not. I just don't know. It was slightly different than the first time. Hmm. Curiosities, things I have to look up, 
But that was our first new run. Our first proper new run. And I am questioning things. Give me a moment. Interesting. So I've been given some new information. For one, it seems that there isn't a way to get the adversary out of, uh, well, what happens to her. Her getting consumed by the shifting mound and us ultimately ending up on that path. But, however, there are ways to you take change her. The altar. And I don't particularly like the methodology because it's not something I would normally do, but the door to the base perfect. Apparently is that another challenger. Finally. Yes, it is. I know, I'm great like that. But see here's the thing. We need to give her a substandard fight. And uh well, hope for the best. See what happens next, as it were. Uh, I mean, just for the sake of having, you know, had this conversation, more or less. I'm not saying I'm not here to fight you, but I think the two of us have a few things to unpack first. What is there to unpack? I was dead, and now I'm not, and the same goes for you. Fair enough. I mean, remain silent. Take that silence as a sign that from this moment on, you're going to treat the task before you with the utmost importance and seriousness. I'm so glad that we're finally all on the same page. Oh, it was a very serious task, I know. But, well. Yeah, uh... You look different. You look exactly the same. Which itself is interesting to me. But, yeah, uh, what if... What if... We attack the princess. Finally ready to complete your And we need to give her a substandard launch fight. Off the whetstone floor of the basement and catapult yourself headlong towards the princess. Here we go. Let's make this count. Oh, we'll make it count all right. As you bridge the gap, you're... she's unfazed by your onslaught. Her yeah, expression she's killing us. changes. Bait an opening and outmaneuver her. Let's try this instead. Push yourself off the ground and attack the princess, trying to bait an opening. You do your best to outplay her, slashing out and leaving red cuts in the tattered remains of her white dress. But you have little moon to maneuver. For every glancing blow you manage to land, she slams you against the wall in retaliation, each impact threatening to be the last. This weak little dance isn't working. Just toughen up and overpower her. She's throwing us around like a ragdoll, I think. Overpowering her is a little yeah. out of the question. Did you think you could stop me with a few cuts? All this dancing around is doing nothing but annoying me. I own this place, and I own you. Hey. Not entirely wrong. But the princess's arm shoots oh, damn. forward, her palm wrapping around your head, fingers gripping your skull. How disappointing. Ouch. She squeezes. Pressure unbearable as her fingers dig <sighs> into your scalp. The last thing you hear is the unsettling crack of your skull and the sickening churn of what was your grey matter. Everything goes dark and you die. Shame. Chapter 2, or Chapter 3 rather, The Eye of the Needle. You're on a path in the wood. If you weren't so damned afraid of what she'd do to you, we wouldn't have died back there. I mean, fair. But I also wanted to see what would happen. Fear is good. Fear keeps us alive. We oh, died you're here. Because you didn't have enough of it. Eh. So what? You'd have us cower in a corner? No, but that place suits her better than it suits us. She's big. We can't hope to find holes and openings down there. We need more room if we're going to survive. Hey, Fair. Are you suggesting luring her into the woods? Do you have any idea how dangerous that would be? If you lose sight of her, if she manages to slip away, that's it. Game over for everyone, yourself included. I mean, would it be for us, though? Good question. You're not challenging us on all the looping. Have you known about it the whole time? Are you the same one we've been talking to since the beginning? Hmm. 
Sorry to disappoint what I'm sure must feel like a grand revelation, but that's not what's going on here. We've never met. Interesting. But he was aware of the looping the whole time. We just hadn't met this fragment of the narrator. Huh. Then what is going on? What's going on is that you'd only be saying the things you've been saying if you'd already been here. And if you'd already seen things you weren't supposed to have seen. It doesn't matter. We could go in circles forever. I don't like staying still for too long. Let's get to the cabin and see this through. What made you? I mean, yes, clearly us getting our skull crushed is what made the hunted, but... Hmm. It's good to know that at least one of you is still capable of reason. We may have the same destination, but we're not the same. You are still an other. And I don't trust you. Well, fortunately, we have an entire trip through the woods to reconsider that. There's nothing to reconsider. We're all for violence here. Hey, there's our guy. Wait, I haven't signed off on anything yet. I mean, let's see what's in the cabin. Violence is the answer here, but the method is equally important to the act. You can't let her leave the cabin. It's like I said, all just circles. Instinct tells me we need space, and I trust instinct. Nothing else to say. Not for me. Fair enough. You're also just a little bit quiet, and the music's just a little bit loud. I'm gonna just tone that down a little bit more. Maybe turn you up a bit, actually, now I say that. For the most part, they're fine, but it's like, every once in a while, they're a little too quiet. We haven't talked enough about how different this place is. I wouldn't even call these woods like her influences poured out into the world. It's evidence of one of many ticking clocks. You can't let her spread any further. Things are always changing. She changed, the cabin changed, we've changed. Why wouldn't the woods change too? Because they're not supposed to have changed. This is supposed to be a path in the woods. If it's not, it means something's gone horribly wrong. Hmm. Sure. And what if I don't agree with the plan? What if I'd rather do something else? You're the chooser. The best we can do is advise. But we can help if you let us. I mean, these are just accurate. powerless thoughts and opinions. You don't need to let them drag you and the world to ruin. Curious that you say that. Powerless thoughts and opinions. Hmm. Oh, well, no matter what happens next, it seems like all our answers are in the cabin. We might as well see this through. Proceed to the cabin. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up the hill at the cabin. I hope you've given serious thought to your predicament. I have. No last advice for us? No words of warning? From what I gather, you've heard it all before. There's no use screaming into the wind. Fair. It's also very rocky, craggy. Huh. I don't know. Screaming sounds pretty good right about now. I could use a little catharsis. Hey, go for it. Catharsis is for when we're finished. For now, we need to hold it out in front of us. Something to chase. Proceed into the cabin. The interior of the cabin is so Oh wow, you're just right tight. there, huh? More of a glorified tunnel than a building. Its stone walls squeeze against your sides, leaving you no choice but to press forward. The only furniture of note is an iron altar jutting out from the wall pristine blade perched on its edge. And the mirror right in front of us. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. See? We have even less space than before. We need space or she'll kill us. And the only space is out there. Fair point. Take it. Uh, except there's no way forward. There's a mirror at the end of the room and that's it. A mirror? But there is no mirror. There's the iron altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. But there isn't a door. There is. Circles. Circles. All of its circles. There's something for us at the end of the room. The what and the why don't matter until we know them. I agree with the freak. Let's get a move on already. The worst comes to worst, we can smash it. Fair point. 
that is sort of what we do. Uh, approach the mirror first, though. I'm curious. We can try to survive without our steel claw, but you've marked us as easy prey. That is fair, actually. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it, as if you don't see it. It's a bit grimy. Why don't we wipe it clean? Oh, I definitely want to save that. What happens if we smash it? You bring your fist crashing down against the door leading to the basement. It swings open, scraping against the floor as it reveals the dim path ahead. All right, fair enough. Load instead. Wipe it clean. Reach forward and drag your hand across mm, the door leading okay. to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the floor as it reveals the dim path ahead. Now I'm kind of wondering if the mirror represents that this path will always lead to the stranger and to the entity between spaces, as I'm going to continue referring to the Shifting Mound because it's what I've called her the entire time. Sorry, narrator. I already gave her a name. Sorry. Before you is what may as well be a sheer cliff face. There are enough footholds that you'll be able to clamber your way to the bottom but it will require careful effort. And yeah, I definitely should have saved before I accidentally rejected getting the knife, but oh well. The air hissing up from below is warm and wet, like the breath of an enemy locked in close quarters. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, bold and fierce and impatient, echoes from the chamber below. Do you have more fight in you than last time? That was such a disappointing show. I know you can do better than that. Go to her. Rile her up. If she's angry, she'll make mistakes. Hmm. You want to fight? Then how about you come and get one? That's not how this works. I'm all chained up, remember? How about you come down here and fight me? Those chains were nothing to her last time. They'll be nothing to her this time. But we need to show ourselves first to make her boil over. I kind of want to see about the hunted's approach. Fine by me. Continue. You've nowhere to go but down. You start the difficult journey, gripping the stone, lowering yourself foot by grueling foot. But soon, there is solid ground beneath you. Remember, every crack and crevice will need to be faster than her. You turn to face what lies at the end of the narrow tunnel. Hey, gorgeous. The princess, imposing and tightly muscled, grins back at you from the darkness. I see she's been hitting the gym. Her face droops. There you are. But this time you don't even have that little knife. Do you think this is a joke? A little bit. Do you need me to break those fragile bones again to remind you how serious this is? She's bubbling. Hot with rage. We can't get close if we want to live. But we'll be able to draw her out of here. She's hungry for us. I know I said this earlier, but I really have to stress how thin of a razor's edge you're on right now. Oh. Don't bother me right we now, know. narrator. The only way out is through the eye of the needle. Hey, it's the name of the title. And we're going to win. We'll need the steel claw. Grab it as we leave. Agreed. Bloody desire in her eyes, the princess rushes forward, ignoring her chains as they bend and snap. Run. Didn't even get to talk, huh? All right, fair. Without hesitation, you turn back the way you came and scramble up the ledge towards the tunnel entrance. As you near the top, hands desperately clawing at jagged stone, you glance back. The princess is right on your heels. She doesn't bother to scale the wall as you do, instead digging deep into the rock of the cliff face with her fingertips in her rabbit pursuit. Huh. A more... bestial version of herself, I suppose. A more, uh... enraged form of herself. Anywhere you go, I will follow! Good. You reach the ledge and hmm. hoist yourself up into the tunnel, the cabin door finally in sight, at once within your grasp and infinitely distant. Alas, it seems there's no negotiating with her, so... What is all of this for? What's the point? You and I are always going to end in violence, so why bother to run? 
I know what I am. Why can't you be the same? Steel Claw, now. Interesting. She knows what she is, but well. Take the blade. Missing a step, you grab the blade from the altar. So you do want to fight me? Good. We're almost there. I actually kind of don't. Don't think about almost. We're there when we're there, and we'll take the fight with us. Your skin hums tight with adrenaline as you burst through the cabin door and roll onto the grass. You glance back at the cabin as the princess, singular in her desire to destroy you, explodes through the doorway. You are walking a dangerous path. If you waver once, it's all over. So get it right. There's nothing left to slow me down. Do you think this is better for you? Do you think this space gives you an edge? Probably. Then show me. Show me that you've been worth all the room you've taken up in my head. Oh? She's been thinking about us. Aw. Be swift. Strike true. Be where she's not. Let your body move you. Hmm. Just curiosities. Are you sure you want to do this? You're free now, and out here I have the upper hand, but we don't have to fight. The princess scoffs. Free? This is just another place. This is just... What is this? Where are we? This doesn't feel right. Oh? It's... It's cold. Why is it so cold? I feel so... Tired. Oh. Oh no. Ah. <sighs> Tragic, in a way. Hmm. Free someone who doesn't want to be freed. Fair. However, we're going to load that. Because, I mean, it feels wrong to not give her at least one fight, you know? It just feels wrong to end any other way. Oh, we'll see about that. Traps aren't real. The only thing that's real is bloodshed. She charges, fully determined to end you in a single move. Tell me we can dodge that. Left, now. As the princess strikes, your body swerves to the left. She overextends, stumbling as her balance shifts unexpectedly. Strike. Oh, damn. Before you can finish the thought, you lash out, the blade slicing through her leg. She turns to swing again. Right. You move out of the way, but this time it's not quite as clean. You can feel a bruise already blooming where her elbow crashed into flesh. Oh, you have like a little Godzilla thing going on too. It's nothing. A scratch. Yes, it could be worse. And you managed to gift her another cut in return. I'll be damned. Yeah, it's working. We're actually gonna pull this off, aren't we? You just might. But don't let it get to your head. Not until it's over. Yes, finally! This is the hole I felt in my heart. This is what I've needed. This is what I've been missing. This is how it always needed to end. Both of us giving it our all, beating and bleeding each other to death. Ah. Uh, the there's the princess I fell in love with. Dating flurry of blows, each of you wounding the other again and again. She's stronger, but you're faster. And the deeper the both of you fall into your lethal dance, the more your edge shines over hers. Ah, uh, alas. She's slowing down, blood pouring from wounds, splattering at her feet, leaving her weak and unsteady. A shame. More. Keep going. We can't stop now. You spy an opening. But this time she's waiting for you. She lets you sink the blade deep, trapping you in place long enough to wrap you in her impenetrable arms. You're slammed to the ground. Nothing. These blows are nothing to us. But her gambit wasn't enough to close the gap. It wasn't enough to kill you. She stares you down, coughing up a splash of blood as she gasps for breath. Oh? <laughs> You've outplayed me. Haven't you? Uh, technically, in two different ways. Something feels wrong. 
Something. And? Then what happens? And then she's gone. But let's see what happened to her. But you do not have the chance to respond. Something has taken her away and it's left something else in her place. Didn't get to read what the achievement was, but... Well. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? Uh, technically no. No, hero, we shouldn't. Sadly, this path leads back to... Well, to a long, long path that we walked not that long ago. Oh, there's that mirror again. Kind Why of a shame, there? in a way. I kind of wish there was just another ending that, you know, could lead to her being happy, as it were. But, alas, kind of a shame the adversary never escapes, never gets her eternal combat. <sighs> but, yes, approach the mirror. I'm, you. Don't do I'm sorry, but no. We must. We must approach the this, mirror. This doesn't feel right. It feels different. Final. That thing reeks of death. Screw the mirror. We just need to find the princess. The voices feel small, distant as you approach. Gaze into our reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. It's just us. Only us. Proceed to the cabin, more for the sake of it than because we want to. You are at the cabin. Approach her. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. The gift of a fragile vessel, you say? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. But does this lock me into the path that leads me to the true ending? This one yearns hmm. to grow and struggle. Even now I feel a will pushing against mine. Not realizing that we are one. She will make for a fierce heart. Hmm. Indeed. Do not mourn her. We will provide her with the growth she fought for. <sighs> A fair question, actually. She is part of me, and part of me is her. That's her understanding of what she is, but okay. And we understand that they were always a part of her, but... What was her response again? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? It does. But, oh well. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit. But this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that... Hmm. I wonder... You ask of... Let it be. Uh, yeah, make me forget. She asks that I Sorry, one more time? That seems to be slightly different. Charging me he That's where you're both wrong. Left. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. Hmm. Fair. If 
thought there might have been something different there, but I skipped ahead, so. Yeah, and I don't know if I want to continue this You're particular path. path or not. There's actually an easy way to test this. Give me one second. Yes. Yep, she's definitely dead. Really? More Okay, yeah, this is a timeline that we don't want to continue because the shifting mound is just going to reset things. Although, it also brings up a question I have, which I might have to explore in a future episode. Uh, can I just get back? Thank you, main menu. Just so I have some music in the background. I just don't know if every ending leads to the shifting mound and so what we went through is absolutely the true ending and something I kind of just want to end on. But we did at least get to see what I think is most of the endings. Well, technically, no, there's another path for us to go down. But, uh, well, let me just do a little bit quick wiki diving. Because I think it sounded like it'd be not pleasant to go through. Uh, let's see, the princess, the eye of the needle, the adversary. Tell me about the adversary, and she can become the fur, the fury, not the furry, the fury. Yeah, it says, after the tower has been murdered or the adversary has been beaten without you taking the blade, you're met with the furry, the fury. Damn it. And she wants to make you pay for what you've done to her. She wants you to hurt each other, and she won't stop until you have felt what she has. And I don't, I don't know. Just given that description, I'm kind of like, no, I'm good. I don't need to get all the achievements. And frankly, yeah, that just doesn't interest me as much as a more roided up version of the previous princess. That having been said, I don't know. I think I have at least one more run I want to try. I want to see about the nightmare, and I kind of want to see. Hmm. I want to see what would have happened if we just, you know, didn't try to slay the abomination princess, the mindless one that we got that first run. It might have been the second run. One of the earlier ones. Hmm. So yeah, that and more will be matters for the future. Also, hey, it actually goes back to this instead of to the horror thing that I heard the song for. Huh. Well, regardless. Thank you all for your time. Now the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon. Goodbye for now.